So here is the uh, kiosk that I have outside of my server room. So this is a Dell monitor, 1920 by 1080. So it's an old monitor, probably maybe five, at least five, if not 10 years old. Uh, mounted to a wall on a little Visa mount. And there's a Raspberry Pi right here. And the Pi has two connections. One is power. And the second one is an HDMI cable that comes up the wall here and goes into the monitor. And so the Raspberry Pi drives the display and I have it set to toggle between two different Grafana graphs. One is an environmental display showing current temperatures inside the server room and outside temperature and you can see it's raining. Uh, and then this is the power usage in the house. So we're currently drawing 10.8 kilowatts, server rooms through 3.5 kilowatts. Uh, and so it'll toggle between these two web pages uh, every 20 seconds. You can configure that in the script. And so I'll show you how to configure that. You can have three, four, five, whatever you wanted to, uh, different pages you want it to go through. And it's automatic. And as soon as the Pi boots up, it automatically goes full screen and you have no keyboard or mouse needed. So it's a pretty neat way to do a little kiosk. You also could hide this behind the display if you had a Visa mount that was a little further out uh, so that it could be even more seamless. So let's go see how to build this. Let's build ourselves a kiosk. So for the kiosk, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a new one, fresh out of the box. Uh, this one has on it a PoE hat. And so this is a little device that allows you to plug in an Ethernet connection and use power over Ethernet to power the Pi itself. You could also just power it via the USB-C port on the side. Uh, and have it use wireless networking to do its network connection, sort of either way. The one in next to the um, server room is in fact just power and wireless. This one's going behind a screen that has an ethernet connection, so I thought I would power it over PoE. So either way works. So we have the Raspberry Pi, we need to build an image for this Raspberry Pi. So let's pop over to the utility to do that. Okay, so there's a little Raspberry Pi utility, an imager you can get from them. You can select the Raspberry Pi uh, 5. We're going to pick the newest OS, 64-bit. You can pick the SD card. You have it stuck in the machine. Hit Next. And then under the OS settings, the custom OS settings, uh, let's see. We're going to give it a name called Kiosk1, a username and password. If you're building it to use wireless, you should put in that wireless config right here, the SSID and the password. That way it'll have it preset in the image. So when you power this on, it'll connect to the network directly. Uh, and we also want to enable SSH so we can connect into it to do this configuration. So we hit save. Uh, do we want to apply these? Yes. And then do you want to continue? We hit yes. And now it asks me for a password here. And now it's going to write out to the SD card. And so this will take it a couple minutes. So we'll let this run. And then once it's done, we'll put it into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, we finished flashing the SD card. So let's remove that from the little reader here. And let's put it into the Raspberry Pi like so. Okay, now we're gonna power this thing on. We're gonna plug it into Ethernet, a little PoE. And it will boot up. Let me turn that light off there. Okay. And now we'll let this boot up. The first time it boots, it's a little slow. It's got to do a couple of config things. But we'll see the screen kick on here in a second. This the display is only a 1280 by 800, uh, but it'll work for getting it uh, configured. So we'll let this run through its boot process. And then we will uh, connect in to it. And it'll tell us the IP address as well once it boots up, so. It's a little slow here, come on. There we are. Now it's really starting. And in the old config guide for this, you had to log in and set the config to auto login, but the latest version does it automatically if you set a username. So you can see that it's logged in there. It's 10.1.1.53. Uh, and so now we can switch back over to here 
and we can connect into it. I called it pi kiosk with the username 10.1.1.53. And it says you haven't seen it before. Yes. And then log into it. So now we're logged into it. Uh, first thing we're going to do, and since this is probably going to sit behind it, screen or somewhere for a long time doing nothing we're going to update everything so we're going to sudo apt update to get the latest update catalog and then we're going to do sudo apt upgrade and this will upgrade all the software on there to the latest release of the software which there'll be probably a ton of and so we're going to let it run that and this will take probably five or 10 minutes, kind of depends on how much has changed from when this image was released and what's the latest release. But there's usually quite a bit there, um, including like a new version of Chromium you can see there. And so we're gonna let this run, it'll take a few minutes. And so we'll pop back once it uh, finishes doing the update. Okay, it finished doing the update. That all looks good. Uh, let's we're going to do a sudo reboot, let that reboot, and then we'll log back into it. So we'll get that just a second. Okay, it's finished booting. Let's connect up to it. Over here. Okay, we're going to connect to the Pi. And uh, the first thing we need to do is we're going to install a utility. So we'll do sudo apt install a utility called wtype. And it's a little utility that allows a, you to send characters that show up as if you're typed on the keyboard. We can use that to send tabs to move between uh, tabs in the browser. And then we're also gonna edit a file in the .config directory called wayfire.ini. And this allows you to auto start something in Wayland when it boots up. And so we're going to add a new section here. And let me grab that. Just a couple of lines we're going to pop in there. OK. Oops, I had to be there. So I did it twice. Sorry about that. I did it twice with a little auto start there, too. Let's fix that. So this is the lines we're going to add. The first is this uh, Chromium line, which says to launch the Chromium browser. And I have two different URLs that it's going to open in two tabs. So in these quotes, you can put whatever URLs you want it to auto open. It could be for a camera feed, or in this case, a Grafana feed. Um, you could have more than two. Um, and then the important part is these extra little variables that puts it in kiosk mode and tells it to start maximized and a few other minor things. And so this will auto launch the Chromium browser when it boots up and have that start up. Uh, and then the second thing here, the switch tab launches a, a shell script called switch tab, which we're gonna write that will occasionally send a control tab to the browser to have it switch between the different tabs that you have at launch. And so you just add these lines to this file and save that out. And then we're also gonna create this switch tab dot tab dot sh which is this script that's going to be ran to um, switch between the tabs. So it's just a little bash file. I'll pull up the code for this here real quick. And very simple. It just checks to make sure that Chromium is running. And once it is, then it just loops every 10 seconds. So the sleep 10 here is the key. And it sends a control tab. The M and M means upper means hit the key and then let the key go. So it'll uh, basically just do a control tab and that will cause the browser to switch between the two tabs and so you can change this timing from 10 to 20 whatever you want it to be and that will switch between the two tabs that auto execute so we're going to write this file out and we now have those two pieces on there so if we go back over here to the top cam so we can see it there uh, we're going to reboot this you do reboot and so now this is going to reboot with that config loaded, just the uh, wayfire.ini with the extra commands to run. And you could have had it run other things if you wanted to, but this is sufficient for the web browser to auto come up. And so now when it boots up, it's going to log into Wayland as our kiosk user and then auto run uh, the browser. 
There it is. And pulls up those screens and you'll watch it. There it loads the second screen. And now that bash script is running and every 10 seconds right now, it's gonna tab between the two uh, screens. And you could have, just have three or four of them or whatever. So we can see right now we're using 10.95 kilowatts of total power, 3.5 and then a server room. And again, in every 10 seconds, it's gonna switch between, this is a little weather and um, some environmental control stuff. So that's it, it's really easy to do. And now you can take this and in my case, I'll plug it into a monitor upstairs and it will auto tab between these two pages uh, without really any other changes. And you know, if it powers off and it boots up again, it'll do it automatically. There's no intervention needed. You don't need a keyboard or mouse connected. Uh, and it's that simple. So hopefully that's enough to get you started to maybe get a Raspberry Pi hooked up to a monitor and have yourself um, a kiosk. So that's it for now.